Imagine you are Kokushiba, the demon brother to THE Demon Slayer Yurichi. With 100 days to finally become stronger than your brother, like you've always wanted. I spawned in on a roof with Muzan facing me, offering me the chance to become a demon to become stronger than my brother Yurichi. An offer which I decided to take, since I didn't want to die at the age of 25. When I woke up, I found myself under a tree at daytime, surrounded by a good amount of Demon Slayer buildings. I wasn't used to being a demon yet, but I began getting wood and soon realized I still had my Moon Nitrin sword as well as 20 extra Muzan bloods, but it seemed I wasn't strong enough with the demon as my Nishrin was still my regular sword. I drank the extra Muzan blood and realized that I was going to be here for a while. <sighs> oh my god, I'm so bored. Soon enough, it became night time, so I headed towards a nearby village in hopes of gathering food. There seemed to be a demon invasion once I got close enough, so I began helping out with slaughtering the villagers, and killing these guys was useful, as they gave me armor and their bodies for food. I then started gathering all the wheat in the village, and ran into a Nusuke who was clearing the demon invasion. Luckily for me, a Nusuke wasn't insanely difficult to fight, since I'd be given extra blood from Muzan, and I had experience from my days in the Demon Slayer Corps. After a long back and forth fight, I managed to take out a Nusuke. Soon after, I ran across my very first Hashira, Gyome, who did not take too kindly to my very existence. I ended up having to run away from the village with Gyome in close pursuit, fearing for my life. Luckily, he got sidetracked with another demon giving me the chance to run away. I came across this structure which didn't house much, but had one vital piece of equipment. The futon. The key to skipping daytime. After this I got my very first demon item, the demon hand, which is basically a horn to make me look cool. The only useful items I found in all these buildings was literally a few pieces of food. I then made this super satisfying set of leaps over to some demon slayers to take them out and use them as food. But then it turned daytime. Luckily I was able to escape inside and use my futon to skip the day. I then found this area which I believe is a graveyard with tons of food. It'd be rude of me to steal there. Kidding, I'm a demon I took literally everything. I made a boat since it turned out my spawn area was some random island and sailed until I found new land. That being the mountain to mission number one, which is where I found my very first friend, a crow named Crowy. I was honestly a little confused on what to do, so I just killed anything that moved for a bit, whether they were demons or demon slayers. Eventually, someone named Makamo got annoyed, which startled me until I realized they were awfully weak and bit the dust in about two hits. Then a thunder breather named Kaga who began attacking me, who to be fair to them was actually pretty strong, though just like an electric Pokemon. Once I got him into some water, he became pretty easy to take down. I kinda just abused the distance put between us and eventually took him down. He did show potential though. I then began fighting some dead kid named Sabito. While fighting him, I, uh, I killed a Crowy. Are you alright, Marcos? Yeah, I'm fine. Except it's a terrible day for rain. What do you mean, it's not raining? Yes, it is. Anyway, I began burning to the sun and spent the day sleeping under a tree until Rengoku managed to sneak up on me and began beating me up. Rengoku was very strong, skilled, and actually had been the run for a bit. He brought me to a single bar of health multiple times, and when I thought it couldn't get any worse, he used his ninth form, Rengoku, which left me on half a heart and nearly ended my video at the 4 minute mark. But luckily I managed to survive on what few hearts I had left, and for taking down Rengoku, I flew up the ranks and unlocked even greater power. I also made a new friend, though this one doesn't have a name, you can choose a name for this crow if you'd like. All I know is that it doesn't like my club penguin dots. I found a massive group of demon slayers and Nest's screams was so annoying, but luckily I was using Audible to drown out the sound. That's right. Today's video was sponsored and brought to you by a service, frankly enough, I actually use pretty often. Audible, the home for audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. You can check out the link I have in the description to get an entire month of Audible for completely free. That free month gives you the ability to check out every single title housed by Audible and keep said title regardless of your member status and make said title basically yours forever. This service is a go-to for me since I use Audible mostly when I'm editing these videos that you're watching right now, and sometimes I use it when I'm going to school. And since you're watching this video, you clearly like anime. Uh, at least I hope so. Anyway, there's actually anime light novels in Audible, such as Shield Hero, SAO, The Saga of Tanya the Evil, and a few Attack on Titan ones too. 
and you can find podcasts as well about all kinds of things. I've dabbled in a few of these, but I usually go for the Star Wars ones because I'm a nerd. Anyway, you can claim your free month of Audible by going to audible.com slash or by texting Samarcus to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Samarcus or by texting Samarcus to 500-500. Anyway, back to slaughtering demon slayers. By taking out this mass assassination attempt made on me, I managed to rank up to a lower moon too. It was only a matter of time until I took my place as the upper moon one. Who's still met this fellow? I'm gonna destroy you. I wasted a ton of time and the only interesting thing I have to show for it is this moment I had while mining. I watched Axolotl burn alive and found Enmu chilling just under the water for some reason. I'm guessing his train form is allergic to water since he just died once I beat him, so that's uh, pretty ideal. I was very adamant on catching this Axolotl too. Feel free to name her. I soon after found Uzu, he was completely out of it. So, to wake him up, I burnt him alive. He didn't sound too happy down there, but hey, that's not my problem. It's not like I pushed him in. But don't worry, I gave him a respectful send off. Out of nowhere, Tanjiro jumped onto me, so I did the thing any sane person would. I began burning him alive. He threw me away, but I grabbed the vine like the legend I am and sat down all cool looking while looking at Tanjiro burning alive. But he, he was taking away too long, so I helped him out. When I got back to the service, it was daytime and I had to sleep through the day. I left the cave and came across, like, my, my brother's cosplay or something. All I can say is that he looks worse for wear. I then saw these bodybuilders and I was only a tad bit jealous. I calmly asked for their workout routine and now I too am a bodybuilder. See, look at me go. I killed some random dudes and gained the strength of an upper moon 6, meaning I was only 5 away from upper moon 1. But before I could be happy about it, it turned out we had survived the burning and come back for revenge. And let me tell you, the fight was not even whatsoever and resulted in me becoming an upper moon 5. Then soon after that, I was attacked by the love Hashira, who gave me a problem as I couldn't follow her movements and she did pretty good damage, though once I had dealt with her I gained the strength of an upper moon 4. I was flying up these ranks. I'm guessing Kanoa didn't take too kindly to me slaying all these Hashiras, so she went for her main character at the moment. Disgraceful and acceptable. She didn't make it very far. Anyway, I found up him in 6th Daki, who wasn't too difficult to take down, so I instead got Gutero out of his sister and began fighting him instead, who was definitely a lot more difficult, but overall I just do too much damage for him to handle, and I ended up having to fight Tanjiro and Rengoku literal picoseconds after ending Gutero. At this point, my server was, let's say, uh, unable to contain my growing power. That, or Rengoku, attained Ultra Instinct. <laughs> I fought Upper Moon 5, Gyoko, next, and as expected, he was more of a nuisance than a hard fight, so I very quickly took him down. He didn't even fight back at one point, that's how one-sided this fight was, but I wasn't paying attention and Gyome spotted me and began attacking me. Turns out he's been looking for me ever since the village invasion, and he was not playing around, let me tell you, but luckily, he's too late, as my power is far greater than it was before, so I put him in his place. Yes, the server is still recovering from Rengoku's trespass into the domain of the gods. I tried taking on Genya, and at this point the server was just unbearable, but it did give me the feeling of being an actual overpowered anime character. Like, check this out, man. But then I got grabbed by a tree branch and started freaking out, nothing scarier than a tree branch. While doing like nothing basically, I unlocked Transparent World. Actually did nothing. But I immediately after had to take on Shinazagawa. He put up a valiant effort and managed to bring my health bars down to nearly under a single bar. He did look cool though, but I could not thank him enough because his death led to my ascendance for the official Upper Moon 1. I also found another crow, but he didn't like me. I did spy on Tengu, but I really wanted the crow, but he didn't want me. I tried to kill it, but he didn't want to die. He's OP. This fight was pretty awful as a bunch of people kept third partying and the most interesting thing that happened was me getting flung up into the air. And to top it all off, Kocho nabbed the kill. I eventually came across Uzo again, he didn't burn to death, he didn't die to death. So now it was time to really put an end to him. Third time's a charm. And this time, I went with making him drown. And then dance on his corpse. I tried to break the boat using demon arts, but it didn't work because I gave up, and decided to try find a place to live instead. I crafted an iron shovel and got ready for some honest work. But then Mitra tried to kill me, and they called me the bad guy. I've done nothing wrong. Mitra was extremely strong and difficult to hit since his mist breathing made it hard to see and read his movements. But luckily for me, I had an air of effect attack, which would hit him anyway, and eventually I took the win. And then I danced on his corpse. 
and then I got back doing this work. So MTV, here's my place, check it out. I call it the Koku Cave. I have cool clothes and, you know, a nice little corner where my feet on sits and stuff. You know, a cup of tea when I wake up, you know, you know, I am British, so, yeah, I do like my, my tea, my tea. Anyway, I took a trip to the Infinity Castle and I can hear you typing. You didn't fight the lower moons, realistically. One, I'm offended. You think I need to. And two, fair enough. We have a lower moon meeting today, you know, scheduled for later, so, um... And see, look, they're not even worth my time. You know, I do hope that lower moon meeting with Muzan goes well. That's, yeah. I ran to the main hall and walked into an Akaza and Doma having a lover's quarrel. So I broke it up with the good upper 1IM and was immediately challenged by Akaza to a duel. I took him up on his offer. And surprisingly, Akaza put up a really good fight with his overly offensive fighting style, but because of this style, it, it was pretty easy to predict what he was going to do, meaning I just had fun with slowly bringing his health down. But he really did put up a good fight with nearly bringing me down to a single bar of health and surviving for so long in the first place. But eventually he was so low that the fight was over. But <clears throat> I accidentally have cut off his uh, head. Sure, um, you know, it'll be all, it'll be all right. What the hell is he doing? Doma challenged me to a friendly duel after seeing the upper one, the upper three fight. Pretty interested in this fight too, since you know he was upper two and. As expected, he put up a good fight, of course, but in the end, I am up in mid one. And overall, my strength is just too much for these weaklings to handle. I then danced with the dice stuff. Though I never realized how nice the furniture of Mutant's castle was, so I nonchalantly stole everything I saw for my own home, as well as get a lot of blood from random chests, which is quite nice. Kind of weird, actually, when you think about it. I then randomly unlocked Red Blade after killing the Tongue Demon. Uh, I mean, I'll take it. Anyway, I went home and placed down all my legally taken things from Muzan's castle. And honestly, I was pretty proud of myself, you know? It's not super grand and, you know, and huge. It's small and wholesome. You know, it has, like, human skulls and stuff. Pretty cute. And I have kitchens now. Yeah, that's game-changing. Finally, it was time to unlock my true power. Something I was honestly afraid to do, hence why it's only happening now. I began meditating and got ready to take on my potential. The area was to put the fight in, as it was completely covered in lava. So to fix this, I used Doma's ice abilities to turn the lava into stone, making a platform to fight on easier. And as expected, my true strength was miles stronger, quicker and more accurate compared to my current strength. The only reason I was still alive was probably due to my increased health from collecting Muzan blood. My potential entered his second and third form eventually, and that's when things started looking very rough. But I played it safe and eventually got the edge over myself and managed to beat and unlock my true potential as Upper Moon 1, Kokushima. I immediately experimented with my new power, and it was insane. Almost everything was one shot by a single move of mine. I returned home and saw a demon slayer waiting to get the jump on me. So I decided to unleash a tiny sliver of my new strength on him. I am extremely strong now. I got to live pretty calmly for a bit since I didn't age and was the strongest second to Muzan in the entire world. But one night I was traveling and came across my brother Yorichi who had surpassed age 25. Not many words were shared between him and I as we began battling almost immediately. Seeing as he looked in his 90s now, I felt confident I could destroy my brother finally. Though to my surprise, I was being thrown around still, unable to keep up with Yorichi's sun breathing. He barraged me with all kinds of different forms of sun breathing until I got so low that I entered my final form and was ready to end this battle once and for all. But I still couldn't keep up with my brother as he eventually got me down to one bar of health and got ready for his final attack, which got me to half a heart. I turned around, unable to even attack, and saw Yuruchi sit still. But all of a sudden, he died of old age. <laughs>